بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأغضة من لساني يبقوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear Brothers um, We continue our study of Surah Baqra Today as well inshallah we will try to cover ayah from ayah number 64 to 87 the story of uh, Banu Israel uh, continues from our previous lessons um, and the three lessons that we learned from the previous class number one was after every hardship or tough situation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends peace and ease towards us so we just have to be patient and inshallah the help and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes our way um, the book or the Holy Quran is for us to seek guidance from and make the right decisions. And eventually, obviously, our main objective is to understand what is being asked from us, what is the right way, what is the path of those who will, inshallah, enter uh, uh, paradise so that we can follow and accordingly perform all the right actions that are expected from us and restrain ourselves from things that we have been told not to do. Last one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and he accepts true repentance. So regardless of how many sins we may have committed or how, how bad we feel that we are, we should always go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is only the way of shaitan that he instills in our hearts and minds that, you know, because you have done this sin or because you are a, you're a bad person, so you should continue that path and, you know, there is no way back. But what we learned uh, in the last lesson as well is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts uh, repentance and he forgives um, based on that. So we just have to make our intentions pure and ask him for forgiveness and truly um, try our best not to make the same mistake or those mistakes again. Um, okay, so these were the three key things from previous class. Let's move forward. Um, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. So we start with the ayah number 64. ثم توليتم من بعد ذلك. And then you turned away after. Um, so if you recall ayah number 63, what we learned was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought in the Jabal al-Tur, the, the mountain of Tur on top of um, the Bani Israel because they were still not believing after all the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them and when Torah and the guidance were sent to them um, through Hazrat uh, Musa, Holy Prophet Musa alayhi salam, they still were not believing but when they saw themselves the mountain of Thur, um, they had no other way but to accept it. Now what this ayah is telling us is that after that event uh, passed, still they they turned away after that. Falaula fazlullahi alaykum wa rahma wa rahmatu. So so if it was not for the blessing and grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what would have happened? Lakuntum min al khasirin. Indeed, they would have been amongst the losers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that. Even after such, after seeing a lot of signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that after that last event, they still turned away. And it was only because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and grace um, that they were not amongst the uh, khasirin. And this is something that is a benefit, uh, that is a, a lesson for us as well, that um, it is only because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his mercy that, you know, we can... Uh, we can save ourselves from being amongst the uh, amongst the losers. Now, moving on to ayah number sixty-five. And indeed, there were those who transgressed amongst you, amongst in the matter of sub. So this, these were the, these were the people. Um, their full story will come in Surah Araf, inshallah, when we go there. But just for you to quickly understand, they were given some instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were living close to a seaside, not to hunt and not to fish uh, during Saturday, which is why they called Sap. Um, and uh, it was a test for them and they failed that test. And then what happened to them is, فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا 
Quiradatan Khasi'in. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despised them and cursed them and rejected them and they were turned into monkeys. So we'll get details of, of this story later, inshallah, when we move to Surah Araf. Important thing for us to understand is whenever there's a test that comes our way, we have to um, we have to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. So basically, um, what happened then? فَجَعَلْنَاهَا نَكَا لَلِّمَا بَيْنَا يَدَيْهَا وَمَا خَلْفَهَا وَمَوْئِذَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ So Allah Ta'ala made this punishment when, they, when he turned them um, into monkeys. It was a punishment so that it can also be an example for the people who were around them for their own and also for many generations after them um, as a lesson so that people can be amongst al-muttaqoon, meaning um, they can fear Allah as well as they can praise Allah. So we have to be amongst muttaqi. So um, one of the core, this is again one of the core principles of Islam that we studied at the start of Surah Baqarah, the, the way, uh, the layout, how, how we should approach. So the first thing is the core and then, you know, there are things that are above like decoration and also this is amongst the core. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be amongst al-muttaqoon. It's an objective uh, for us. Now, in this lesson, we have to follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right away. So we should not, even if we do not understand reasons behind certain things or hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should at that point in time when something, when an instruction comes to us, we should follow it. And then we can, you know, try to increase our knowledge and uh, understand what it means. But it's not like first we are asking, ah, I didn't get it. So, you know, I still need to understand and all of that. But once we know what we are being asked to do, we should immediately do it um, because it's a matter of religion and it's a matter of faith. Moving forward. Now, another uh, part of the story uh, continues of Bani Israel with the Holy Prophet Musa alayhi salam. So when, when Hazrat Musa's uh, people um, told him or said to him or asked him, In Allah ya murukum antasbahu baqara. So basically when, uh, when the Holy Prophet Musa alayhi salam asked his people um, that Allah commands you that you slaughter a cow. So this entire story, the perspective of this is, and we'll see it in the later ayahs, that there was a murder that happened amongst those people in, uh, within Bani Israel. And in order to solve the matter, because they were still following the directions from Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. So they obviously they asked well, who is the murderer and they had to find out um, the truth behind it. So what Allah commanded them to do was to slaughter a cow. And if you look at it, from the perspective, if you look at the previous ayahs that we studied during uh, Surah Baqarah, it is not the first time that we hear about the cow. So, do someone, does someone remember when did we hear about the cow and the Banu Israel? Anyone can recall? No one? So, basically, if you recall, when Hazrat Musa uh, went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when, while, while he was giving, being given uh, Torah, um, there were some people amongst Banu Israel who started worshipping a cow. And there are other instances that we find that where it says that Banu Israel, because obviously they were coming from Egyptians, and if you recall that, you know, the Pharaoh um, uh, who was in Egypt, he was instilling a lot of um, uh, cruelties uh, to Banu Israel. And they were so much oppressed and suppressed that they, they, they also started to look up to those because they, the Egyptians, those, uh, those uh, companions of the Pharaoh were seen as superior beings while, you know, the Banu Israel was inferior. So whatever they did, they started to copy them as well. And it is also said that some people amongst those Egyptians um, used to worship uh, cows as well. So it was that inspiration that you know even started them or um, uh, or motivated them to start worshiping the cow so that had already happened with hazrat musa and a lot of people amongst them had already been punished so hazrat musa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to punish those people and kill those who who did not repent and then the rest of them repented 
based on those instructions so basically allah subhanahu wa taala wants or maybe the intention is to get the cow out of the system so really you know just to so that they slaughter the cow and they understand that the only one to worship is allah subhanahu wa taala so when this thing happened where you know there was a murder and now they are trying to solve the mystery of the of the of the murder um allah subhanahu wa taala eh, asked hazrat musa to tell his people that you know to slaughter a cow now now let's look at their um, reaction qalu atattakhizuna huzuwa so they said that are you are you making fun are you really joking what does you know the cow has to do with the murder that has happened or the, or what what i mean we didn't understand um um is this is this something like funny or what because they couldn't understand the relation between that so what did hazrat musa um, respond qala a'udhu billahi an akuna min al-jahilin he said that i really take refuge from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from being amongst al-jahilun or the ignorant or the foolish people this was his response so it's not like you know i'm the one who's ignorant but this is something that is coming as an instruction from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you guys to follow so if you want to solve the case qalu dhu lana rabbaka yubayyin lana ma hi so what did they say they said okay call upon your lord for us that he may make plain to us what it is so ask your lord to make it clear we didn't really understand um what it is and give us more district descriptions of the cow so basically what is happening now is and you'll see in coming ayahs as well that they'll try to make um excuses and they'll try to ask more and more and more questions and some of the islamic scholars also say that hazrat musa alaihi salam um used to get these uh, revelations um in mount tour and they and he he had to travel almost like a day or half a day to go there and come back so what the guys here bani bani usrail were trying to do was just to send him back and forth again and again so that maybe make him tired so that he you know the whole idea can be given up or um they 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 were just thinking that it'll, they will have some fun with him um or something so they are asking questions and every time they are asking questions the holy prophet musa alaihi salam is now going back and getting the answers so they are asking us please tell us what uh, what this means and please explain the what type of cow should be now the answer of hazrat musa to them obviously coming from allah subhanahu wa taala yaqulu innaha baqaratul la farizun wala bikrum awam basically verily it is a cow so basically it should be a cow that should not be too old or too young but it should be in between awan baina dalik so it should be in between middle aged and young so it should be a cow like uh, not too old and not too um, young faf alu faf alu ma tu marun and then basically he is asking them just do whatever you have been told so what hazrat musa alaihi salam is telling them is you guys have been told to slaughter a cow it is easier for you to just slaughter a cow as you have been told right so just perform the action right away why are you making it uh, difficult for yourself so because it's i'm telling you that it's coming from allah subhanahu wa taala so this follow the instruction um don't ask too many questions because then if you ask so many questions and you get into the details then you know it will it will even become difficult and difficult uh, for you to find that specific cow however i mean they they think that they're trying to you know fool him and ask him more and more and more questions just to you know tease uh, him so let's see what happens next qalu dhu lana rabbaka yubayyin lana ma launuha so basically they said then again please go back to your lord or ask your lord to make it clear for us um uh, what should be the cow's color so then azad musa again he, you know he he gets the answer yaqulu innaha baqaratun safra u faqih so basically he's telling them that the cow has to be bright yellow in color so now i think um what we should understand is that this bright yellow color is not really something usual right so we don't see bright yellow or let's say golden cows um normally so it was again as i told you guys earlier as many the more questions they asked the more it became difficult um for them to even uh, find uh, that cow launuha tasurrun nadirin and it should be pleasing for the eye so it should be very beautiful for um for the viewers who are looking at the cow 
So when they ask the question, what should be the color of the cow? The description that they get is it should be bright yellow in color. It should be um, pleasing for the eyes. And obviously earlier we, we, we learned that, you know, it should not be too young. It should not be too old. Um, and now we are getting towards a very specific type of cow, which is not really very easy to find, right? So the difficulties of them finding that cow are becoming bigger and bigger. Now, and then they said, now they're asking the other, uh, then they're asking more questions and they're saying, please call upon your Lord to make plain to us what it is. So they're now they're asking more. So they're saying that, you know, we need more understanding of what type of a cow it is because there are many cows who look alike and they are so uh, they are similar and and then they said that inshallah la muhtadun so basically if allah wills or allah wants then you know we will be guided otherwise they are saying that you know we will be misguided and this is something this is one phrase that you know we as muslims should also refrain because when we pray we, we do not pray. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something. We say that, uh, you know, may this happen. May I get this or may I, I enter into Jannah or refrain from hellfire or, you know. Then we, at the end of it, we say, Ameen. We don't say, Inshallah. So it's not like we are implying, if Allah wants, you know, we'll go to Jannah. And if he doesn't, then we won't. Or if Allah wants, then this happens. So the way we pray is, um, we say Ameen and we don't say Inshallah. So even this expression, the way they are uh, asking the prayer is um, is not the right way of asking Dua. Um, sorry guys, just give me one minute and then we'll continue, okay? Just give me one minute. Okay, so let's continue. Are you guys with me? Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah. 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 Okay, so uh, so basically they continue asking these questions again. Let's see in the next ayah. So basically... Uh, Hazrat Musa again went back and he asked and this is the response. So he said that this cow should should not have been trained. It should not have gone through any hardship. So normally what, what people use cows for is to till the soil, for farming, to water the fields, right? Um, and, uh, and you know, so, so, so what Hazrat Musa is saying is that this cow... As we, as we earlier saw that it should not be too young, it should not be too old. So obviously it's the prime age. It is bright yellow color and it should not have even be used to till the fields. So this is now becoming a very difficult cow to find. And it probably, if it is, you know, it will be um, very expensive as well because it's bright yellow in color. It has never been used. So it is not like, um, it has never been tired um, and trained. So... So now, because they were asking so many questions, it became now very difficult um, to find as well. Um, and then it says, Al-Harsu, Al-Harsa Musallamatun La Shiata Fiha. And there should, it should be in bright yellow color without any um, spot or anything on it. So it should be like uh, clean uh, without having any injury or any, any mark. Qalu, Qalu Al-Ana, so now the response came from uh, Bani Israel that now you have told us the truth. Now we understand uh, what we need to do. And what happened after is So basically they slaughtered it even though they did not want to slaughter the cow. So eventually they found the cow and in some accounts we find that, you know, they had to pay a really good money 
um, even to get that cow uh, because uh, the person who was owning it um, um, obviously did not want to give it up. So they had to really pay a big uh, money um, to even get that cow. Now we will see why they were asked to um, slaughter the cow and how the case got solved. So here is the description of the case. What is patal tum nafsan faddaratum fiha? And remember, so basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is um, now telling us about exactly what happened. And when you killed a man and then you disputed amongst it. So basically there was a murder that happened. And then people started to dispute that who killed it and who killed him and you know what what's the matter and how should we solve that uh, uh, how should we solve that crime so now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Wallahu ma kuntum taktumun. so basically Allah ta'ala brought out the truths so basically you know he they were there were some people here it says so Allah Taala uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala brought out the truth uh, despite some people who were hiding it so there were some people amongst the Banu Israel who already knew who was a killer but they were hiding it so now let's see how Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala brought the truth to life in front of everyone so Allah Taala uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said فَقُلْ نَزْرِبُهُ بِبَعْضِهِ so um, strike one part, uh, so strike the, uh, take a part of the cow, like one of the body parts, the one, the cow that you've just uh, slaughtered and strike this part to the person who was murdered. What happened is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, revived that person. So that person basically who was dead, who was murdered, he pointed towards, so he was brought to life, he pointed towards the killer, and then he uh, died again. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this was obviously um, nothing short of a miracle. So it was an amazing miracle that happened in front of the eyes of those who were present, that someone who was dead, they slaughtered a cow, based on the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they brought out a piece from the cow, they, they, they did the strike, and um, and the person woke up and then, you know, he pointed towards his killer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, Allah ta'ala brings these proofs, these evidences, these ayahs or signs in front of us so that we can understand, um, we can think and we can believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moving forward. Now there's a description of... Um, because it's a matter of belief now as well. So there's a description of uh, the hearts, the different type of hearts of people and the, the Iman inside those hearts. And we will see how uh, this is getting explained. Um, and you know, when, when, when hearts um, become hardened, you know, they don't accept the truth and the reality. So basically what happens is that um, for a heart, in order to be flexible or in order to accept things that are against what we normally think, it has to be soft. And when it, it becomes hardened, um, the example given here is of those of a stone. So let's understand um, the three types. Thumma qasat qulubukum mim kal hijara. And then your hearts hardened after that. So that they were like stones. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that even after those miracles, even after those signs, some of the people, those who did not believe, the reason they did not believe is despite all the clear signs and ayahs is because their hearts have hardened. And you know, they are so strong in hardness. And indeed, what happens is, despite that hardness, hardness of the stones, from some of the stones, um, there are rivers that flow out of it. So basically, if you recall, when we were um, reading about Banu, Banu Israel and when they were roaming around in the desert, um, their Hazrat Musa and, and when they asked for water, so Hazrat Musa salam, was asked to strike his stick, the one that he used to carry, 
to one of the stones and there were 12 rivers or 12 stream of waters that were sprung out of that uh, those stones so that all the 12 tribes of Banu Israel could settle down. So Allah, those Banu Israel, they had already seen this miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining this concept of Iman or uh, inside a tough heart, even, you know, if, if at the start the heart looks hardened, but a river or a stream of water of Iman can flow out of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the same example, the miracle of which they had already seen. So he's trying to use that example to explain how uh, the hearts can work. So even if it looks hard from outside, um, you know, rivers of water can flow out of it, which can be equivalent to Iman. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْ هَلْ مِنْ هُلْمَا And from them, even from the, the, the other hearts, there are certainly some types of heart that can again split open and water can come out. So the difference is in the first ones, there is a full flow of Iman who are ready to be birthed. So even if you tap them a little, the first type was that rivers of water or streams of water will burst out of them. So they were ready to accept Islam. Those were the, uh, we can say, uh, those were the softer types of stones or which were already filled with, uh, you know, which, which were filled with Iman so much that you just tell them, you tell them, you show them signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one ayah and you just uh, let them know and then, you know, they open and, 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 the, and streams of water start uh, coming out of them. So there are different types of people um, and different things strike to them in order to really believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second type is that you need to hit them and water starts to come out. So there's still um, water within them. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَحْبِتُ مِنْ خَشِيَةِ اللَّهِ And still there are some that fall down from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the third time. So, you know, immediately uh, Iman doesn't come out. But, you know, they because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are strike so hard that they fall down from the place that they were holding. And they thought that, you know, they are strong and they can continue to hold that place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to, you know, um, tell us that Allah knows everything he's not unaware about anything um, and he knows you know what what we are doing so we look at these three different examples and three different types of people um, you know and the relationship that this example has with how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings in fear and iman and praise inside the hearts of people so if you look at this full story of the cow um, and the slaughtering of the cow and how Bani Israel, they could have, they could have had it very simple, right? So it could have been very simple for them. They rather, rather than asking so many questions and then going to a specific type of cow and then paying a big price for that cow, um, ultimately, and then eventually slaughtering it, they could have taken the first instruction from Holy Prophet Musa alayhi salam when he told them that, okay, you have to slaughter a cow. They could have just slaughtered any cow. But because they delayed, tried to delay it and ask unnecessary questions, made those excuses, they, they paid a high price for that specific type of cow and eventually they had to slaughter it as well. Even for us, I mean, you know, um, in matters of religion, uh, especially, um, some people ask a lot of questions and, you know, um, even, I don't know, you may have friends and when you, when, when you start discussing about fasting, okay, so now you do not have to um, eat or drink um, from the start of the day, uh, from the from the sunrise until the sunset at Maghrib time, we open the you know the the the, the we do the star and we uh, we open our fast. And you know people ask different questions. Uh, okay, so if it is from the sunrise and you know until you know the sun sets, how are people supposed to um, do fasting if they are in the North Pole? You know, so. Um, but then one can ask them, why are you even worried about people in the North Pole? Are you living in the North Pole? No, you're not living in the North Pole, right? So, so these sort of questions people ask uh, related to religion, when they get into the tiny, weeny, deeny details that don't even concern uh, them 
and directly impact them. I mean, you have been told to fast, just, you know, do the fasting based on, you know, where you're living and from the sunset to, from the sunrise to the sunset. So I just gave you this example of fasting, but there are many, many other examples um, that people ask uh, unnecessary questions and make um, religion tough for them. So, of course, I mean, um, we have to increase our knowledge of the religion. We have to understand the right way of performing the right actions. That is one thing. But asking questions that, you know, don't really uh, concern. And if the instruction is clear, just follow the instruction. So, so this is um, one of the lessons that come out from the story. Are there any thoughts, any questions from you guys regarding the story of what we have learned so far before we move forward? Anything from your side? Okay, so let's move forward. Now, moving to ayah number 75. Um, Do you um, people who believe um, in the religion, um, do you think that the Jews will will agree when you talk to them and will listen to you and start believing as soon as you show them the words of Allah. Um, so basically, this is a question that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking. So that story of Banu Israel um, as, uh, is, is, is completed for right now. But now in this ayah, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing to the people who were with the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina and they were talking to Jews. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, do you uh, believers, do you think that, you know, they will believe in your religion despite of the fact, now what were they used to do? So some of them um, used to change the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the kalam Allah. Um, and then what they used to do, thumma yuharrifunahu. They used to distort and change those words. Mim baadi ma aqaluhu wa hum ya'lamoon. And then they used to change the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, some of the Jews, what was the word or what was the book that was given to them? It was Torah, as we learned in the previous ayahs. They used to change it um, knowingly after they had understood it. And we saw several examples before as well. So, you know, they, sh they, they, they got to see a lot of signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They got the exact word of uh, Torah. But they change the, te the teachings of Torah so that, you know, it becomes easier for them. And they don't have to follow the exact instructions, which they, in their mind, thought that, you know, that it is very hard and we, we don't want to do it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling now the people in, uh, in Medina with the Holy Prophet wasallam, who were now bringing these Jews to Islam and everybody who were inviting people to accept Islam. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling their history that, you know, this is what they have done in the past. They knew the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Torah, the right instructions, but knowingly they changed them. What else did they do? So basically, when Jews meet those who believe, uh, like the Muslims here in Medina, they say, we believe you. Of course, we believe, but then when they are amongst the people who are from them, what do they tell them? So what they are telling them is, okay, in front of the Muslims, they say we believe, and then they are saying, don't tell Muslims what Allah has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already revealed to you. So when Muslims used to go to the Jews to preach about the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he's the last prophet and what are the teachings of Islam, those Jews, they knew about the signs of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa within Torah, within their books, within their teachings. They knew that the last of the prophets will come um, and he would culminate and complete the entire religion in the holy book of Quran, they knew about it already. So they were telling those, uh, those uh, amongst themselves, uh, the people of the book who had this knowledge, don't tell Muslims about this. Because if you tell Muslims that, yes, yes, we also have it in our teachings, 
then Muslims will hold you accountable on the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that when we brought the message of Islam, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to them, they did confirm to us, yes, we know about this and it was also revealed to us. So if you do that, then you know, you will create a witness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are thinking that, uh, you know, don't go to Muslims and confirm their religion. But what they are not realizing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows what is inside their hearts. He doesn't even need witnesses at the day of judgment. He knows that, you know, they were revealed the truth. They change it completely. Now, even when Muslims are going to them and taking Islam, they don't want to confirm that all the teachings that they had and embrace that Islam, but they want to hide it. And they want to say, you know, we don't want to, um, they want to create this misunderstanding. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying uh, is that, you know, they cannot um, deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll see it in other ayahs. Now, what was really mentioned by the Holy Prophet uh, for the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in uh, Torah? So there is a Sahih Al-Bukhari Hadith. Um, and there was a Sahabi who asked, you know, um, that I want to know about what is mentioned about Allah's Messenger, Holy Prophet. So even before the Holy Prophet came, what was mentioned in Torah? So the reply is, um, yes, by Allah, he is described in Torah with some of the qualities attributed to him in the Quran. So some of the qualities that were already um, attributed or were told in the Holy Quran about the Holy Prophet وسلم, was already there in Torah. So what were these? We have sent you as a witness uh, for Allah's true religion. So, you know, you have to tell people about Allah's true religion, which is Islam and a giver of glad tidings to the faithful believers. So those who believe, they have nothing to fear and they can be, uh, they can be happy uh, and a warner to the disbelievers. So, and he should warn to those who don't believe. So the glad tidings for the believers is Jannah and the right path. For, if they follow the right path, there is a reward for them. And a warner to the disbelievers or those people who don't believe, who are on the wrong path, who are on stray, um, and a guardian of the illiterates. So basically, he would be the guardian of people who are umi or who don't have the knowledge. So you are my slave and my messenger. I have named you Al Mutawakkil, who depends upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You are neither discourteous, so you are, you know, you treat everyone equally. You treat everyone nicely. You are not harsh nor a noisemaker in the market, so you don't create unnecessary uh, disruptions in people's life or, you know, fuss. And you do not do evil to those who do evil to you. So this is very important. Um, this is one of the attributes of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did not do evil despite whatever happened to him in return. We all know the famous story of the people of Taif when he went there and when he um, started preaching them. Although they did, they did not take his message in the right way. The kids over there, they started throwing stone at him. And, you know, at, still at that point in time, um, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not curse them. In fact, he gave them a dua so that they become also believers. So he doesn't do evil to those, even though, uh, even though they do bad to him or evil to him. But you deal with them with forgiveness and kindness. So this was one of the attributes of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Allah will not let him, the Prophet Sallallahu die till he makes straight the crooked people by making them say, La ilaha illallah, no one should be worshipped but Allah by which blind eyes, um, deaf ears and closed hearts will be opened. So with this, La ilaha illallah, this kalima that we say, a lot of the hearts will be opened. So we saw the three examples of the hearts, which seemingly were like stones. Um, even those you can open and rivers of Iman or rivers of water, you know, they, that uh, just like water flowing out from the stone, the Iman can flow out of those hearts as well. So these are the attributes and the things about the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that were already there in Torah and still the Jews, when the Muslims took Islam to them and told them the last, the Holy Prophet is amongst us. And you know, he, these are the teachings they refused um, to accept. 
awala ya'lamuna anna allah uh, so basically they do not know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya'lamu ma yusirruna wa ma yu'linun allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that is inside their hearts and what they say or what they declare so whatever it doesn't matter what they say or they do not say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is inside their hearts in the previous ayah we saw that they were telling their own people please don't tell muslims that you know in our book yes it is already mentioned that holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will come and now they are coming to tell us about it and you know they are telling us uh, about islam so don't tell you know hide this from muslims um, so that uh, in the day of judgment they don't take it upon uh, against us but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he already knows um, what is inside their heart and what they are um, speaking wa min hum ummiyuna la ya'lamun alkitab and among them the the illiterate ones who do not know the book who are not aware about the book illa amaniya wa in hum illa yazunnun except they are thinking wishfully so basically they are among uh, they are people amongst the jews who 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 do not really know the book so they have really not read their own book and they just are doing guesswork and they are just saying things as they want so they are not following the book they are not following the guidance they are not following what they have been told for uh, told to do but they are just following uh, following their desires they just do whatever they want to do um and what else do they do which is again um is something that we also need to get a lesson from is fai lul lil ladina yaktubun al kitab bi aidihim what they are doing is Allah subhanahu wa taala is cursing them and saying woe to them who write the book with their own hands. So basically, what they do is they write instructions and books with their own hands, and then what do they say? Summa yakuluna hada min indillahi, and they say that this is coming from Allah subhanahu wa taala. So what they are doing is they are writing instructions. um after the torah was revealed to them with the right instructions they did not follow it whatever their heart desired um they started writing their own scriptures they started writing their own books with their own hands and then say ah by the way this has come from allah subhanahu wa taala why why did they do that li yashtaru bi sama samanan qalila so they were trying to barter with it so for a small amount of money or for little price or little value something material they were changing the scriptures so there were people amongst the jews who in order to please other people or it could have been pleasing their rulers or pleasing those who had uh, money um they used to change religion and you know give rulings um and give um give whatever the, the 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 rich people wanted for some little money or little price so they they almost started selling the religion um and now uh, allah subhanahu wa taala is saying fa wailul lahum mimma katabat aidihim wailul lahum mimma yaksibun so woe to them or curse to them for what they have written with their hands and what they have earned so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying both of these actions of writing um the book or the instructions of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or changing them um as well as getting money for it it is a cursed act and they will be um they will be asked this on the day of judgment now there is a another concept that is coming again uh, it is related to jews what they used to say however i think we should also reflect upon it ourselves as well what were, what did they used to say waqalu lan tamassana naru illa ayyaman maduda they used to say that we will enter hell fire or the fire will touch us only for a few days and then you know we will be taken out and uh, uh, and we will be forgiven so they are saying that even when we are doing these little things when we are doing these sins that they thought are you know little they thought that they will enter fire and they will be taken out of it um uh, after a few days so it's not like you know they'll stay there and all of that so what is allah subhanahu wa taala uh, responding to them qul 
So say or ask, Attakhastum indallahi ahada. Have you taken a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Falayn yukhlif allahu ahada. So that he will not break his promise. So the first thing that they say, we will only go to hell for a few days. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking them, have you taken a promise or have you done a contract with me that, okay, fine, for all the sins that we are doing, we will only stay there for in, in hellfire for a few days. Uh, and that, you know, because of that promise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not break it. Am taquluna alallahi ma la ta'lamoon. And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, or are you saying all of this um, um, on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, but you really don't know um, what you're saying. So basically, they are completely misguided. They are just saying that we will stay in hellfire or hell for a few days, and then we will be out in a few days. If we take this, um, even today, um, and there are lots of people who even jokingly say, Okay, fine, you know, let's do this sin or let's do things, you know, even if we have to go to hell for a few days, it's fine. I mean, eventually we are Muslims. We say, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So, you know, we will be forgiven. We are, we are born Muslim. So we have to do, we don't have to worry about it. Let's do these small, these sins, these sins. And, you know, uh, eventually we will go out of, uh, of hell and eventually we'll go in, in the heavens because, you know, we are believers. But let's think about for a second you know, we cannot even hold warm bread fresh out of the oven, right? We cannot even um, hold hot food with our fingers. Forget about um, getting a touch of fire or a matchstick or something else. I'm just talking about hot food, right? We To break a bread, which is hot, <laughs> it's very difficult. I mean, you have to wait for it to let it, you know, cool down a little bit. So we we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. We cannot say... That, okay, fine, it will be only a few days. I mean, what few days? Even when you, you know, you get a little bit of fire and on your finger or something on a small body part, you cannot bear it. You cannot just simply bear it. So going to the hellfire for a few days all, and all of this is, who are we fooling actually, right? So, so these concepts and these things, they are not even an option um, for, for, for true Muslims and for us. So we should be, we should really pray uh, from, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, um, we, we don't even go there for a second. Allahumma janni min nar That's the prayer that we uh, we ask Allah's refuge and protection from the, the hellfire. Moving forward. Bala man kasaba sayyiatan wa ahafat bih. And whosoever has earned evil, it has surrounded him. Khati um, atu. So he has been surrounded with sins. So these are the people who are surrounded by evil and they're doing evil things and they're surrounded by sins. And these, those are the people who will be the companions of hellfire or who will go to hell. And they will abide in it forever. So the previous ayah that we saw that they were saying, ah, we will be there for a few days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it very clear here that those people are the ones who just say these things and continue to do whatever they want to even change, you know, the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, uh, do evil deeds. They are the ones who are surrounding themselves of sins. And it's not like they will go to hellfire or hell just for a few days. They will remain there forever. Again, we should continue to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask his refuge from hellfire because we cannot even bear it for a second or even a millisecond. Um, as I told you the example, I mean, you know, we cannot even break hot bread out of the oven. So what are we talking about? And those who believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, and they do righteous deeds, they are the one who will live in paradise, hum fiha khalidun, and they will remain in it and abide in it forever. So, in this small life of ours, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do good things, follow the right path, and refrain from the bad path or stay away from the bad path, don't do bad things. This is a small life um, that will eventually pass, and eventually, all of us will die. So, for the 
for the life that will start after that we should pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know we enter jannah and we should work towards it even if we have to refrain from a few things um in this world so this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that only those who do good deeds righteous deeds they repent they ask for forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are the ones who will go into jannah into heaven and they are the ones who will be staying there um forever wa iz akhazna mithaqa bani israil la ta'buduna illa allah and then we took um uh, a promise or an oath from the children of bani israil what was the promise now these are this is a promise that was taken from uh, the bani israil however this entire um, promise is also very much relevant to us um, to follow because it's the same islam and it is the same teaching that continue the first part was la ta'buduna illa allah do not worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then wa bil walidayni ihsana be good to your parents this is the first instruction so first we need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we have to be good to our parents what does um, i just have a question and um, let's hear some answers from you guys very quickly So what does it mean to be good to our parents does that mean that we should give them a gift on mothers day or fathers day what does it mean that we have to be good to our parents it means that we should regularly uh, regular like uh, care for them because they have sacrificed a lot for us very good we should regularly so i really like um, the word that you use regularly take care of them so it's not like in our religion it's not like you know ah okay mothers day once a year that's the day that i will you know take care of my mother or fathers day that's the day i'm going to give them a gift or thank them or if i am living somewhere else i will call them no 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 in our religion after worshiping allah subhanahu wa taala the what we are reading here is that we have to be good with our parents it has to be a continuous thing we have to take care of them because they have sacrificed a lot of um things uh, for us throughout their life for our upbringing for our education for everything that we are today um you know allah subhanahu wa taala made our parents uh, wasila for us um in order to get all of that so we have to be good to our parents what else was zil qurba and with our relatives so the close relatives the blood relations that we have wal yatama and the orphans wal masakin and the needy there is a description of needy this is very important who will tell me who are masakin who are the needy people sir who are poor who don't have money who are homeless who are homeless or who are poor and who don't have money yes but yeah, yet, um, the, pe- the people who don't have food to eat that's correct let's look at the definition of they are on the streets having no food yes they are usually on the streets they don't have the money and probably they are asking people so generally we feel that people who ask for help or ask for food are um are needy of course they are needy because they don't have it but let's look at also the description that we have here in one of the sahih al bukhari there's a there is a fine difference that we need to understand yes the people who ask who don't have money uh, they are the ones who are needy but the needy is that who has not enough money to satisfy his needs and whose condition is not known to others that others may give him something in charity so people don't even know about them and who does not beg of people so in a sahih hadith what we are learning is that there are people whose condition is very bad so they don't have food to eat or they don't have the provisions but what we need to understand is that they don't even ask people out of their nature or character that they don't want to ask anyone other than allah subhanahu wa taala so how do we get to know about miskin people how do we get to know about people who are needy or even who are orphans who are in need 
you you cannot just go and ask oh by the way are you an orphan uh, or someone no you you cannot do that right what we need to do is we have to get closer as a community so when we go to masjid when we go to a mosque or when we go to a place where there are people we have to connect with people so normally when we go to a mosque we see a lot of people around um, our neighbors and a lot of people but we don't get a chance because life has become so busy that other than saying assalam alaikum and wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah and just saying the greetings we we don't even interact with people the way the islamic the the community of islam is around the mosque when people are going there and they are praying five times a day they are talking to each other they get to know about each other's problem that's where you can you know um help people so we have to know about our relatives our blood relations if there are any orphans around if there are any needy um people around and then what we need to do is obviously help them and waqulu lin nasi husana we have to speak to the people in a nice way we have to uh, say uh, we have to speak good of them we just saw and learned about the attributes of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam he never did bad things to anyone despite the fact that they did evil things to him he always did good things to them and prayed back to them so even it is a sunnah of the holy prophet to deal um and speak nicely to people and you know um treat them in a nice way what else we are supposed to do wa aqimus salata wa atu zakata we have to establish the prayer and give zakah what will happen after that thumma tawallaytum illa qalilan minkum wa antum mu'ridun so after giving all of these instructions allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that many of you or all of you will turn away from these teachings and from these guidance illa qalilan except a few of you um all of you would be refusing or all of you would be declining so what does this mean so although this is for bani israel this is for the children of israel um so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave all of these instructions which are the guidance for them the book for them the the instructions for them and then at the end of it he's saying that um many of you or most of you or will turn away will refuse all of this except only a few now this phrase illa qalilam uh, qalilan basically we will see it coming multiple times in the holy quran what does this phrase um tell us we should always pray and act on islam to be amongst the few what do i mean by that what do you guys understand from this when i say we should pray to allah subhanahu wa taala to make us amongst the few we don't want to be the majority please make us amongst the few and then we should act that you know amongst uh, that we are amongst the few what do i mean by that the the few who will go to uh, to the few who will go to janna uh, yes so i want all of you guys my younger brothers and myself we have to pray to allah subhanahu wa taala to be amongst the few let's see um i don't want you to get into the trap of or i don't want you to get into this trap that all my friends are doing this all those muslims are doing this are doing that right so everybody is playing cards what's wrong in playing these games of chance or what's wrong you know in in gambling what's wrong what's wrong in watching movies everybody is watching movies and in muslim countries and what's wrong in uh, watching uh, or, or listening to music or chatting or chatting with uh, with with girls you know i mean as you grow older and as you become teenagers these things start to kick in um have you guys heard these or said these words all of my friends are doing this all those muslims are doing that we have to understand that as we saw in the holy quran there will be only a few there will be only a few who will be following the right guidance this is not the first time that we are hearing this it will come uh, or the last time that we are hearing this it will continue to come in the holy quran that all of you you know uh, will not follow except a few except a few except a few so um the next time shaitan gives this thought in your mind that let's do this everyone is doing it 
yeah, yeah you might as well do it look look at your best friend look at your best friend you know look at uh, this guy he's a muslim he's doing it um, he's a muslim you know you you travel uh, you travel together you go um, to a non muslim country there they are eating meat which is not halal right it's not proper zabiha so it's not cut the it's slaughtered the right way the muslim way but most of the muslim they don't t- take care and they go there and you know they they eat it so you know might as well you can, you are also with other muslims and you see them doing stuff but what we need to understand is that there are only a few people who will follow the islam so if you look at the image on the left it's you know amongst the few who will pray who will pray with jamaa in the mosque who will um, do fasting not eat during fast who will give charity right charity to the poor so these are the good things still there are few people doing the good things again there are a lot of bad things around us in this world there are lots of people who are doing all of these bad things but what we need to do is to pray to allah subhanahu wa taala to make us amongst the few so next time when you are asking your parents for example there is a concert around or there is a there's a party happening where you know that things will happen that are not under uh, that are not um uh, in line with the teachings of islam or what allah subhanahu wa taala wants us to do you cannot go and ask your parent that yes i want to go to that concert or that party or that movie or that if it is against the teachings of islam so we have to remember we, because shaitan gets us in this trap that everyone else is doing it all my friends are doing it there are five people doing it i am in a group how can i be different why should i just it's very difficult um when you know everyone around you is doing it but these are the people who will get rewarded only the few so let's uh, pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he makes us amongst the few who are mentioned in the holy quran multiple times and who are on the right path and who follow his teachings so every every time shaitan gives you this thought of all of the people all of the muslims all of the other rara all of this just you know try to shrug yourself and say no 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 i mean what is the real what is the right thing that i should be doing as a muslim what is asked for me and then follow that even if you are one alone or few or um, whatever of that sort is this concept clear are you all with me alhamdulillah 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 Allah. let's move forward yeah so the uh, the lesson for us um out of this discussion is the reality in this world for us is that only a few people follow uh, islam the way it should be so we should pray and act um, on islam to be amongst a few inshallah um moving forward wa if akhadna mithaqakum la tasfikuna dimaakum and when we look uh, and when um Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking about a promise um, that He asked uh, again, Bani Bani Israel. So they were asked not to um, fight amongst themselves and not shed blood, and um, and also obviously when there are captives, when when fights and wars occur, there are captives, so you have to release them. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling them that when we took a promise that you will not shed blood amongst yourselves. wala tukhrijuna anfusakum and not evict yourself so basically not um um not send out people out of your tribes um and you know tell them to leave the tribe or whatever so not evict amongst yourselves min diyarikum summa aqrartum wa antum tashhadun so when allah subhanahu wa taala asked them not to turn away people outside of their homes not to turn away outside of the tri- of the um of the tribes then um what uh, so so this was the promise that allah subhanahu wa taala asked them to do but um and and this is something that they promised um not to do so allah subhanahu wa taala is making them a witness um of this whole scene that we ask you and you gave promise that you will not kill your own people kill amongst yourselves or have fight amongst yourselves and you will not turn away people outside from your home from your tribes so you were a witness so this was a promise amongst ourselves however what did they do thumma antum ha ulai taftuluna anfusakum wa tukhrijuna fariqam minkum so what did they do they started to 
then you are those who kill yourselves amongst i mean yourself meaning the people amongst yourselves and you put out and you um, asked a party amongst you or people some amongst, amongst you to leave your homes min kum min diari him so you ask them to leave uh, your homes tazhar tazaharuna alaihim bil ithmi wal udwana wal udwani wa in ya tukum usara usaraya tufaduhum wa hum muharramun alaikum ikhrajuhum so what did they do basically they um, first of all they 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 had a fight and they started killing people amongst themselves and then they drove out a party outside of their ho- homes and they so allah subhanahu wa taala is saying after making that promise you guys transgressed and you have committed a sin right and after doing all of that what they did is so they did not listen and they did not meet the promise of not fighting among themselves however what they did is they um they took people and they released the captives so they did, they started doing a, a good deed at least from their heads they said that okay fine we are doing a good deed as well afatu minuna bi ba'dil kitaba wa takfuruna bi ba'd so they listened to one part of the book and and they believed in one part of the book and disbelieved in another part and basically here the book also means instructions so they they did one part of uh, they, they did not listen to the first part of the instruction that please i mean don't fight amongst yourselves don't turn your people away from yourself however when such things happened and when there were fights and when there were captives they took part of the instruction that okay we will release the captives by paying some ransom by paying some money and they thought that they are good doing um good fama jazaa fama jazaa man yaf'alu dhalika minkum illa khizyun fil hayat ad-dunya basically allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is then telling them that this um this is a disgrace this is something that you are doing um which is a disgrace for you in this life hayat ad-dunya in in this life as well as wa yawm al-qiyamah in on the day of judgment so taking part of the instruction and leaving another part of instruction um will not benefit you in this life as well as hereafter yuraduna ila ashad dil azab so they will be sent back with the most severe punishment wamallahu bighafilin amma ta'malun so they are uh, they are thinking that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not aware of what they are doing an instruction was given to them they they did not follow that however there was another instruction they followed part of that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this is the words that they can do that they take part of one thing they reject another thing and then they think that oh we are doing a very nice thing eventually allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying for them there is um severe punishment and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of each and everything that they are doing ulaika alladhina ashtaru alhayat ad-dunya bil akhira so those are the ones who have um those are they who have brought the life of this world at the price of the hereafter so what they are doing is they are they are thinking that they are getting something good in this world because apparently it is probably in their favor so they are the ones who are buying this world or good things in this world in place of akhira which is the day of judgment and after that you know um going into jannah or going into hell fire so just for a few days of this life they are doing things however it's a trade that they are making for akhira which will not benefit them fala yukhaffafu anhum al adhabu wala hum yunsarun so there uh, this allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that there will be a a punishment for them um and there will be a torment on them and they will not be helped because of the way um they are taking part of the religion or part of the instruction and they are not taking part another part of the instruction walaqad ataina musa al kitaba wa qaffaina min ba'di and then um 
uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about uh, Bawra, the book that um, Hazrat Musa was given. And when, when we gave Musa alayhi salam the book, we followed after him. And then what happened after he was given the book? Bir Rusuli, we followed after him messengers. So there were many messengers that were um, sent to Banu Israel. Wa isabna Mariyama, and we gave uh, the and then to the people of Bani Israel, uh, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, the son of uh, Hazrat Maryam, also um, descended upon them. What did, what did all of them bring to the people of Bani Israel? Al bayinat, a clear signs. Wa ayyad nahu biruhil kuddus. So basically, they were given clear signs. And they were also supported by Ruhul Qudus, who means uh, Hazrat Jibrail. So Hazrat Jibrail used to bring them revelations as well. Um, and they were given clear signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then, um, what did they do uh, when messengers used to be brought to them? Anfusakum what they used to do was whenever the messenger um, used to come first of all they would not listen to the messengers they used to um, become arrogant they were arrogant and some of the, the the prophets that were sent to them they completely denied and some of them they used to kill so this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, is telling us about the the story of Banu Israel, and it is very clear that even after um, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, there were many prophets that were sent, including um, Hazrat Isa and uh, alayhi salam, and uh, they refused. Uh, majority of them refused to these messengers who were sent, and um, and they became um, arrogant, and then they they started even killing those prophets. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is sharing this background and this perspective. Um, to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the, the, the Sahaba or the companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who were at that point in time trying to teach um, the Jews who were there in Medina and the surroundings and they were trying to invite them to Islam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is giving this background of, of, of these Jews who uh, and, and the Bani Israel um, that who after given so many instructions so many signs and a lot of prophets that came to them they still continue to refuse and believe in the message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, now at this point in time we come to the closure um, of this class um, there are basically three lessons that we have learned today first of all our religion is complete and it is absolute. Basically, the Holy Quran, the instructions in them uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came to us via the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a complete book of instructions. There are many things that we have been told to do. We cannot just pick and choose the ones that we like. Okay, fine. I mean, I for me, it's uh, easier to pray, but you know... Um, fasting is a bit difficult, so I may not fast this uh, month uh, of Ramadan. Maybe probably next year I'll have a look at it. You know, once I build my strength and everything. No, no. I mean, if fasting is compulsory for you based on age, you have to fast. Unless there is something or a weakness or a disease or something that is unavoidable. Yes, then there is a way out as well. However, um, we cannot pick and choose our actions or we cannot pick and choose the instructions um, of Islam that have been given to us, um, we have to believe in its entirety, which is why we also, I mean, if we don't understand something in Islam, it's not like we don't follow it, but the way to go about it is that we try to build our own knowledge um, so that we understand the logic, but we cannot say, okay, fine, this is an instruction in the Holy Quran and, you know, I don't understand it, so probably I will not do it right now, but that's that's not the way. We have to make sure that we are following all the instructions. Um, and the second one is similar to what I just said. So if imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created us, right? So it's like um, we are his creation. He knows how we will operate best and he has the user manual for us. So he has the manual or the user manual or the instructions 
um, of how we will we will work. So we have to follow all um, of those instructions right away uh, without thinking about the logic or at times because you know when we don't understand anything it is our own limitation it is okay to ask questions it is okay to um, seek knowledge but once something has reached to us as an action we should try to do it right away this is related i mean you understood you also understood from the story of banu israel when they were asked to slaughter a cow um, they were given as clear instructions slaughter a cow but then they continued to ask unnecessary questions color and what it should do not do and made it very difficult for themselves so this is not the way of uh, believers once an instruction is given we should immediately follow and last but not the least what we discussed that we should pray and act on islam to be amongst the few we will find a lot of people within muslims um, who will be doing things that are um, not right or that are against the teachings of the holy book holy quran which is why you know we continue to increase our knowledge which is why we continue to even attend this class so that we we continue to learn what are the instructions given to us by allah subhanahu wa taala um but um never don't fall into the trap of shaitan that you know um there are many people you know my friends are doing this and other muslims are doing this don't fall into this trap we have to once we have understood the guidance then we have to follow it in its full entirety whenever something good reaches us or an information or a teaching or instruction reaches us we have to follow it immediately okay so we have arrived towards the end of the lecture is are there any questions from you guys anything before i close is everything clear are you guys with me yes sir no questions alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah. So may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala open our hearts and minds to feel the miracles of Islam in our lives. Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. Um, Inshallah, I will see you guys next week. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikum.